Anthony Joshua versus Francis Ngannou. A total fight for the ages. This is one of the most well-made boxing matches of all time. Two huge power punches from their respective sports. Two really strong guys and arguably some of the best athletes that their respective sports have ever produced. This is going to be an epic fight and I really do think that France Ngannou is going to give AJ quite a hard time in this one. So in today's video, let's go over the differences between the fighters. Let's have a look at their records, the ways how both of these guys can win, but who I actually think is going to win, how and why. All right, so Anthony Joshua, one of the most famous boxers of all time, arguably one of the most successful boxers in this current generation of fighters, next to people like Tyson Fury and of course, more recently, Klitschko as well. He's fought some legendary fighters and he has won. More often than not, he has won. The only boogeyman that Anthony Joshua has really had throughout his career is Alexander Usyk. And to be honest with you, I don't think you can take that away from him. He lasted 12 rounds to over two fights with Alexander Usyk, who is arguably one of, if not the best boxers that heavyweight boxing has ever seen. Alexander Usyk is a god of boxing. He's just one step ahead of everyone else, it seems. And I'm really looking forward to Tyson Fury against Alexander Usyk. I think it's going to be an absolutely fascinating fight. But that'll be for another video. But Anthony Joshua, a legend in heavyweight boxing. And I find it hilarious when people make comments about Anthony Joshua saying, oh, he's just a bodybuilder. Right, he is a power puncher. You can't deny that. Heavyweight boxing, if you have a little bit of power, it goes a long way. But I wouldn't want to stand in front of Anthony Joshua and call him a bodybuilder and that he doesn't have any boxing ability. The man clearly knows how to box and he can box really well, all right? Let's not forget he was an Olympic gold medalist and he's been two-time heavyweight champion of the world. You can't take that away from him, all right? He has beaten all of the best fighters that, that have stood up to him, all of them, every single one, apart from Alexander Usyk. And don't get me wrong, AJ, he has relied on his power a lot throughout his career. But arguably, you could make the same kind of judgment of Francis Ngannou, okay? So that's why I think this fight is going to be absolutely fascinating. We've got two massive power punches, but I actually think that both these guys aren't going to get into a firefight. But we'll talk a little bit about that later. All right, so in MMA, let's talk about Francis Ngannou. So... His MMA record is 20 fights, 17 wins, and 12 by knockout. Anthony Joshua, 30 fights, 27 wins, and 24 by knockout. So the ratio is actually pretty similar. And they've also lost the same amount of fights as well. Three, three losses for France Ngannou and three losses for AJ. Absolutely fascinating. But France Ngannou does have the edge in terms of pure physicality. So his height, he is actually a little bit shorter than AJ. He's standing in at six foot four. AJ's standing in at six foot six. But he is significantly heavier, weighing in at 117 kilograms, whereas AJ is weighing in at only 111 kilograms. Now we'll see what the weigh-in actually comes out at just before the event. AJ might come in a little bit heavier. We'll have to wait and see. But Franz Ngannou also has the reach advantage. 83 inches to AJ's 82 inches. And that might not sound like a lot, but an extra inch in reach can make all the difference, especially when it comes to the jab. So Francis Ngannou does have the advantage in pure physicality, but this is where AJ might actually be able to claw a little bit of that back. He is younger, three years younger than Francis Ngannou. Ngannou can clearly do it in the boxing ring. He clearly has the stamina to go all the way 10 rounds. Anthony Joshua has been there for 12 rounds. That'll be fascinating to see if Anthony Joshua manages his stamina differently or manages his work rate differently to Francis Ngannou. But they both clearly have really good gas tanks. But Francis Ngannou, he has less experience going the distance than Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua has been there how many times now? Twice against Alexander Usyk. Of course, the decision against Andy Ruiz as well. And so that might actually have a part to play if Francis Ngannou decides to try and get into a firefight with Anthony Joshua. He might tire himself out. We have seen Francis Ngannou tire himself out in MMA before. So 
we'll see. We'll see. If that's the play that he decides to... The strategy, rather, that he decides to go for, you know, and try and knock out Anthony Joshua in the first five rounds, it could end up really badly for Francis Ngannou. And Francis Ngannou, I think he's a chess player, man. He's really strategic. He's a really smart guy. So is Anthony Joshua. But Francis Ngannou, he's going to use a lot of that intelligence that he has to overcome Anthony Joshua. But you can bet your bottom dollar, as soon as he smells blood, he's going after Anthony 100%. So Francis Ngannou, he's heavier, he's stronger, he has that reach advantage, and he more than likely hits harder than AJ does. But does that really matter? If Francis Ngannou does hit harder than AJ, well, I would love to see Francis Ngannou take a heavy shot from AJ. And we'll see, we'll see if Francis Ngannou can stand up to AJ's power. That is... We simply don't know yet. Francis Ngannou hasn't been in a boxing match that we've seen where he's encountered a really heavy hitter. So that's going to be absolutely fascinating to me. If Anthony Joshua pulls the trigger a little bit every now and then, tests out Ngannou's chin, how that's all going to work out. And I think everyone's got a little bit more skepticism behind AJ's chin. So I do suspect that AJ's going to be sitting behind his jab a lot throughout the fight, and he's going to try and score on points. For me, if AJ is going to win, that is, is, that is the, his best route of winning, sticking behind the jab and using his better boxing ability. I think, <laughs> I think it's no secret that if it was an MMA match, well, yeah, I, I think we all know which direction that would go. AJ would get absolutely destroyed. I don't think there's uh, any two ways about it. But then again, I say that. They're both fighters, and I think if AJ did decide to get into an MMA cage, well, he would adapt. He would train, and he would adapt for that environment. But let's be honest here, there's nowhere near as much money in MMA as there is in boxing, so it will probably never happen. But I do think that these elite-level fighters, they do have a lot of that spirit in common where they just want to fight. And if they want to prove that they are the best, then they are prepared to move about a little bit test out the waters in other competitions in other styles or other combat sports and i you know if anthony joshua was put in that position i have no doubt that he would he would certainly do it if the money was right at least if it paid as much as a boxing fight would but of course i think francis Ngannou's path to winning is via knockout we've seen that Anthony Joshua's chin, when it's tested, might not be quite as robust as some other fighters in the division. And arguably, Francis Ngannou, I mean, he's taken elbows, he's taken some pretty hard hits with those small MMA gloves, and he's taken kicks to the head, and they don't really seem to have faced him all that much. So, yep, yeah, Ngannou might have a little bit more resistance to, than AJ in terms of his overall ability to take shots. But let's be honest here. This is going to be over 10 rounds. If you're doing 10 rounds and you're getting hit hard with every other punch, well, you can see how that's going to wear someone out. And I think this is where Francis Ngannou may struggle a little bit against a heavy hitter. Anthony Joshua is used to throwing heavy shots over a consistent period of time. And so as Ngannou gets tired... And as Anthony Joshua starts putting on a little bit more pressure towards the later rounds, and he starts hitting him, he starts hitting him either harder or the same. You can see how over time that damage may end up being Ngannou's downfall. From my perspective, I think Ngannou actually is probably going to win this one, despite the fact that AJ has got all that experience and he's a heavy hitter. But I don't think AJ is going to be able to help himself. I think he's going to want to try getting into a firefight with Francis Ngannou. Because he wants to prove that he can fight Ngannou better than Tyson Fury did. And I think every single fight that he's been in recently has all been in pursuit of that. To prove to everyone that he's better than Tyson Fury. Ngannou, of course, he's going to use that experience that he had against Tyson Fury to his benefit. He's going to get better. He's going to have a proper training camp for this one as well because he's got the money behind him now. Fair play to him. He earned it fair and square. And some people even argue that he won against Tyson Fury in that original fight. I don't know. I think it was closer to a draw personally, but it's very rare that you see a fighter get knocked down and they win the fight on points later on because... I mean, that's two points down. Every time you get knocked down, that's two points off. 
So all Ngannou had to do was just win three more rounds. Three, yeah, yeah, it was three more rounds, and he would have won that fight. So in a nutshell, Francis Ngannou, his path to winning is more than likely going to be to knock out AJ. And I actually think that despite the fact that AJ might have a better gas tank than Francis Ngannou, Ngannou's best chance is going to be within the first five to six rounds. After that, well, AJ might be able to use his boxing ability far more than Ngannou will when they're tired. AJ is going to be far more disciplined when he's tired than Ngannou. And he's going to use that experience of understanding when to lay, lay off a little bit, understanding when to step back, take a bit of a breather. Uh, it's going to be hard for AJ in the first five rounds. I have no doubt whatsoever. But as Ngannou's stamina starts to go down, well, that might be where AJ will be able to outpoint Ngannou. I seriously hope that AJ doesn't get into a firefight with Ngannou, even though that's what everyone wants to see. Everyone wants to see these two power punches going at it toe-to-toe -to -toe and seeing who's left standing. I know that's what everyone wants to see, but I don't think that's what's going to happen. And Anthony Joshua knows that he has a disadvantage when it comes to Ngannou's strength, when it comes to Ngannou's reach. But Anthony Joshua can clearly box, and he can box really, really well for points if he needs to. And, I mean, he may end up deciding on a round or another to test Ngannou's metal. He might go out there, fire a few shots when Ngannou's a little bit more tired, and see how he stands up to them. You never know. Anthony Joshua might be looking in terms of if he wants to try and get the knockout, he might be having to feel it out a little bit to try and get a sense of Ngannou's stamina. As he gets more tired, he's going to be more vulnerable to knockouts. The same goes for AJ as well, but Ngannou, he's going to have to be in there for a long time with AJ before AJ gets tired enough that he's going to be susceptible to a knockout. So for AJ's sake, I hope he doesn't go all guns blazing, but for Ngannou, I think that's what he has to do. To be honest with you, he's not going to be able to outbox AJ. So why fight on AJ's terms? Put the pressure on AJ. If you can hit him a couple times really hard in the first couple of rounds, well, that's going to put everything in question, into question right there and then for AJ. You're going to put doubt in his mind. You're going to make AJ worry about this, this guy's power. But AJ, that's what you need to expect. You need to expect heavy hitting in the first two or three rounds then after that it should get a little bit easier you can stand behind your jab score those points keep dancing around Ngannou Ngannou's quite heavy footed compared to AJ AJ is heavy footed as well For I mean of course most heavyweights are but AJ is certainly lighter on his feet than Ngannou and so I hope that he's actually learned from Alexander Usyk that if he can put in more work rate than Ngannou then AJ is going to win every time. And I know that we want to see the knockout, but I seriously don't think that AJ is going to score this knockout. If he does, it's going to be in the later rounds when Ngannou is absolutely exhausted. But that's really what I think the strategies are going to be. AJ is going to be scoring points. He's going to be trying to win those rounds. And maybe seven, round seven, round eight, he may have a go at knocking out Ngannou. But Ngannou, he's going to be trying to go for the knockout within the first three rounds. And if he doesn't, well, I think that's probably a gamble that he's going to have to take because he's not going to be able to outbox AJ over another 10 rounds like he did with Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury clearly outpointed Ngannou, uh, at least on, on paper anyway, according to the judges and the referee. But I seriously think that that is how this is going to go down. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it, honestly. It's going to be absolutely amazing. We're going to be watching it live uh, and uh, I don't know, maybe next week or the week after we can do a little bit of a review of the day's events and see where how things go. Uh, you know, I kind of analyze how the fight actually plays out and see how close my prediction actually was. But I hope that this has been an insightful little video on the fight between the fighters and... Uh, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. If AJ is going to win, how do you think he's going to win? And if Ngannou's going to win, how do you think Ngannou's going to win? It'd be interesting to see what strategies you guys actually come up with, how you feel like this is going to go, and which way it's going to go. 
For me, I actually fancy my bets on Nganu at least within the first three to four rounds, two to three rounds, maybe. But then if Anthony Joshua can survive those rounds, then I actually think Anthony Joshua has a better chance of winning after that. So we'll have to wait and see everyone. But thank you so much for joining me on today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you've learned something today. And let me know down in the comment section who you want to win. Because for me, <laughs> it's a win-win either way. Both these guys are absolutely amazing. I followed Anthony Joshua's career for much longer than Nganu's. But honestly, they're both great guys, fantastic athletes. And I think they do our sports proud. You know, these are guys that are true champions of their respective sports. And to see them both going at it head to head, I don't think we can ask for much more as a boxing or MMA fan. I think it's going to be absolutely fantastic. But let's see how it goes on Friday. Thank you ever so much for joining us today. Leave that like, hit subscribe, and we will catch you all in the next video. Have a good one.